Hi, I'm Lu Kang and I'm here to talk to you about physics educators as designers of simulations using Easy Java Simulation. And this is actually a part two of my first AAPT Portland 2010 talk. Now, how can we use EJS? Uh, essentially, there are two approaches of learning. One is the inquiry approach, of which there is a, a blend of real equipment as a connection to real life and and the computer models can serve as a medium for student-centered instructions where can, the students could be doing individual pair work guided with worksheets. And we found that the skillful facilitations of actually two teachers is required rather than one. Now, the other one is about the constructionism by Pepper Seymour, where you learn by making. Uh, this is a, a pedagogy that is white, that is advocated by Christian Wolfgang and others in the open source physics. And what I can say is that I'm a, I'm a living example of how this uh, learning by making has made me understand physics a little bit more deeper. Now, this is some of the design features which I thought would be useful to share with the rest of the people in this meeting. And uh, let's say we look at, uh, rather than telling all the students what coherence means, so we can actually design it such that there is this checkboxes and allow students to change the frequency. And this will change the coherence between S1 and S2. And the students can actually look at all this uh, instantaneous intensity as well as the average intensity to realize that there is no fixed pattern on the screen. Whereas in previous cases, it is actually possible to have a fixed pattern. Now, this fixed pattern arises because the, the two sources are actually coherent. Now, the other one, I already talked about the intensity graph, and the actual, the other one would be the amplitude. So as you can see from here, I find that the side view of the amplitudes of the sources, as well as the, the intensities the, the bopping up and down of the position point P is particularly useful to illustrate the point that the, the amplitudes at the sources are not, not the same as the amplitude at the point P, which many students don't quite get it. It's actually the, you know, you need to travel a little bit further in order for the ampli for the wave to reach point P and it's actually the sum the sum of the various wave okay now I'm just gonna stop here or 3d view uh, we can see it in, in uh, the other one okay so this this is a, a two slit oh that, that's taken from Andrew and this is the two slit direction model and I'm just going to show you this one. Now, this is uh, interesting uh, because if I were to make the width sleeve a little bit wider, and this is actually the Eugene's principle where after the wave hits a barrier, it becomes in itself a secondary circular waveform. And the resultant can be seen quite nicely uh, through this visualization. Okay. Now, what do we mean by 3D? Uh, oh, and and uh, how can I uh, use this to make, let me see, uh, okay, two source, okay. So now you can see that there is actually a two source. Obviously, I, I do not know the physics of this very much, but you know, this has been sorted out by the, the physics professors. <laughs> yeah. Now, the next one is actually the standing wave in pipes, which is from Johns. And I designed it such that there is actually this N, A, N, A, the nodes and the antinodes. So, uh, by changing the mode, you can see how the modes and the anti-nodes are actually uh, 
associated with the wave characteristics. And there are also these checkboxes where the student can key in to check whether their answers are correct in, in the questions in the tutorial. And the third one will be the modeling aspect of it. So the student can actually uh, key in manually or through a, a design feature, which is a, a drop down menu, to understand that if this 0 0.49 multiplied by sine of this x multiplied by the cosine of uh, this uh, omega t, omega t, lambda x and omega t, 2 pi. On. <clears throat> and this is actually the the wave that doesn't correspond to the actual standing wave. So you, you, the student can actually figure out. Oh, so this is the answer. So this is my uh, in, not, this is my interpretation of how we can actually allow for modeling. Now this one has a three D aspect of it, and uh, we also I also designed it such that you know it also toggles the toggles the 2D view and this allows a very clear visualizations of how the magnetic and the electric field uh, propagations or uh, the oscillations are not are always at 90 degrees to each other and also to design a couple of other uh, checkboxes to allow a visualization of the lambda in this case and the direction of the wave now this is a model uh, also from Fukun, and I particularly like this one because this is actually on the black body radiation, and I actually found that from uh, another computer model released by Juan, that he actually made it such that it's possible to actually see the resultant intensity colors as a result of the particular radiation spectrum. Uh, emitting at a particular temperature so yeah so this is uh, pretty nice these are some of my research interests i have some journal papers that and uh, a big thank you goes out to uh, paco fukun uh, wolfgang douglas mario and andrew taha michael and todd uh, for without them uh, i would not be possible for me to learn so much from the open source physics and these are the digital libraries which you can visit to download more computer models. Uh, so, you know, I hope that I've given you an overview of the EJS learning community. And these are the two links which I usually visit. Uh, and I hope that you can see how it is useful to create, to, to lead in free access to quality education resources. And I hope that you can contribute to this movement. So everything will be downloadable uh, from this link as well as if you would like to hook up with me through Facebook and this is my account.